Sarah Benson, thank you so much for coming on to my IGTV and chatting with me today. So delighted to be here, Holly. Thank you. And thank you also for working with us to promote the Two Into You campaign. We're so, so delighted to have you involved. I'm absolutely thrilled to be chatting with you today. We've obviously loads to, to get through. Maybe if we could start with just if you could give my followers like a, a bit of background into like what the Two Into You campaign is actually about. Sure. Um, so Women's Aid as an organisation, we've been around for nearly 50 years um, and we're one of the national organisations working to combat domestic violence. And since 2011, we've had a specific campaign called Two Into You, and that's really about raising awareness amongst uh, young people, young adults, 18 to 25, looking at the warning signs of intimate relationship abuse, talking about what is a healthy relationship instead of an unhealthy relationship sharing the stories and experiences of uh, particularly young women who've been through this and uh, of course then giving information about support services that are available. I think it's it's such an incredible website. I grew up like I didn't know about you know places that you could go like this for advice and um, for your friends for yourself and I think knowledge is power and whether you're not even in a position where you're worried about yourself or your friend even to go there and get the tools so that if you ever find yourself in that position you know that women's aid is there for you you know that two into you have everything you need everyone should take a look at it whether they feel an urgent need now for personal reasons or just to know just have the tools if you have daughters if you have sisters friends you know just so we all have that kind of knowledge that it's there yeah, fantastic knowledge is power a lot of people are familiar with the term domestic abuse and um, and so maybe you know for anyone who hasn't heard of actual intimate intimate relationship abuse what's the difference there when you say domestic and violence together usually domestic kind of people think well you must be living with somebody it's in your own home but of course that's not the case and particularly the younger you are the less likely you are to be living with your partner um and then violence can sometimes um you know immediately make people think of physical violence but actually abuse in relationships by current or former partners is actually more complex than that and it doesn't always have to include um physical abuse so intimate relationship abuse was a term that we came up with uh, after a 2020 national survey we did and some focus groups with young people. I have some of the results from from that here and I was really surprised I think by the lack of awareness around it amongst young women in Ireland. One in five young women and one in 11 young men aged from 18 to 25 have experienced intimate relationship abuse in Ireland. When we talk about this from a woman's point of view, you will always get, you know, maybe a reaction, even a comment on my Instagram from a man saying, well, you know, this happens to men too. And of course we're aware of that, but it is a lot higher that the woman will be the victim of this in a relationship. One in five young women report that they're experiencing abuse from a current or former partner and 51% that first experience was below the age of 18. So this is their very first relationships in many cases and that kind of sets the scene um, in terms of your self-esteem, your confidence, uh, you know, how you relate to future partners and, you know, it can have a trauma that lasts a long, long time. That's not, of course, to say that young men don't also experience abuse. That statistic was one in 11, but it is a very gendered uh, phenomenon. It's particularly heterosexual young women being targeted by uh, their male partners, but that also doesn't uh, mean that it doesn't also happen in LGBT relationships as well. And, you know, it's really important that anybody who maybe goes to the Two Into You website, you know, there's a quiz there that shows, you know, warning signs in relationships. Those are warning signs irrespective of whether you're male, female, non-binary, it doesn't matter. They, they're they just kind of showing you what might be things to watch out for. It's hard when you're under 18, it could be your first relationship, so you've nothing to compare it to and to, you, have, you don't really know. You, I mean, unfortunately, we don't really learn about this in school. Daphne didn't when I was in school. So how do you know if someone is crossing the line? And I think a big thing for me in my experience is to go with your gut and I suppose the majority of the time if something doesn't feel right then it just probably isn't right. That idea of going with your gut is yeah. is an actual crucial point and this is where um, you know intimate relationship abuse uh, you know partner abuse is particularly insidious because what it, it does is it's not about like once off um, uh, abusive behaviors it's a pattern of behavior and um, the actual effect it has is to get is to get somebody more and more and more in their head um, so that they are no longer able to listen to their gut. That's actually a tactic of an abusive relationship. Over time, this kind of wearing down, this coercive controlling uh, behavior so that they actually are just constantly 
vigilant to what he wants, what he might say, how he might react. Um, and they're no longer able to actually tap into the fact that this is just, this isn't normal because they're just coping uh, day to day. When it comes to this kind of abuse, it's manipulative, it's sly, it's not obvious. When it comes to something like gaslighting, where you know that the behavior is wrong, it doesn't feel right, it's upsetting you, you're losing sleep over it. And when you try and bring it up, you're being a drama queen, you're being sensitive, you're being a psycho. It is that kind of thing where, like you said, it can just build and build. And I suppose to focus back in on like the warning signs, it might start with someone you know slight you know getting a little bit jealous in the beginning or you know saying remarks about your friends not really wanting you to spend too much time with them maybe looking at your phone you know those kind of things that maybe you could it would be easy to brush them off as it gets to a stage where you know like you said your whole life is consumed by this then and it can happen quicker than people realize anyone who's in an abusive relationship or has come through one and is still kind of trying to process it it's not your fault um there's nothing about you that makes you a target for somebody who chooses to be abusive the most common thing is that they will target somebody who is open-hearted and kind because what they will do is they'll exploit that they and they will use a lot of emotional abuse so they the kinds of um uh, tactics that can get confused early on in a relationship for maybe really romantic or you know this person's you know so sensitive you know that they you know they feel things really deeply and uh, and so then that can start to translate into actually some things that are red flags like you know um, wanting to be with you all the time and nobody else you know like so oh, why do we have to go out with your friends or you know isn't it just so much better just the two of us then kind of starting to interrogate where you have been and what you have done when they aren't there maybe showing up when they're not there uh, getting jealous jealousy is something people often and young people often think of as a reflection of the insecurity of the person who expresses it but actually it's also a warning flag that they feel possessive uh, and that means that they're, they're maybe thinking of you more as a possession rather than an equal in the relationship and you know that that's hard to untangle when you're kind of in the middle of you know a fresh new relationship that feels good in other respects it's frightening even to talk about it but it is so important that we do talk about it and that we normalize the conversation and like you said if this is happening to anyone the victim is never to blame it's not their fault there is a section on the two into you website as well where you know if someone's being threatened with images that someone might have without their consent or they're being threatened that the images or videos are going to be sent around that can just be so consuming can fill people with fear and anxiety and um, so there is obviously legal advice there there's support there as well if anyone's going through that Absolutely. I mean, online abuse is something that has really um, increased in recent years and younger people are particularly vulnerable to it, not exclusively. And that can include, you know, stalking online, that in can include hacking into accounts um, and uh, it also can include uh, either threats to or actual sharing of intimate images, which may either have been taken without consent or at one point shared consensually, but then being used as blackmail or um, as a way to, to abuse. And so the actual sharing of uh, intimate images without consent is now against the law. Mm -hmm. um, and that includes third parties. So if somebody receives somebody else's image and then shares it on, that's also against the law. So there is information about that. Um, there is a website called hotline.ie that you can contact to try and uh, engage with platforms to um, get materials taken down and then also report to police if that's what you want to do. And then there's also uh, tips on kind of cyber safety and security because, you know, keeping your passwords changed and up to date realizing and recognizing that it's not okay for somebody to demand your passwords but know that if somebody is abusive they may find ways to to look over your shoulder to spot them from the outside if you're a friend witnessing this and um, obviously it's a touchy area to be in because you don't want to overstep the mark and isolate yourself from your own friend or you don't want to approach the abuser either to put yourself at risk of any kind of backlash in that sense so as a you know there is a section on the two in, into website isn't there for friends who are worried about their other friends 
Yeah, there really is. You don't want to say the wrong thing. You don't want to do the wrong thing. But actually just asking someone if they're okay, just saying, look, you don't seem yourself anymore. I notice you, you know, you don't seem able to relax. You don't have to say why you think you're worried because the fact is if those kind of changes are going on for any friend, it could be a different reason, but it's still a good question to ask. Um, and just asking, you know, you don't need to have all the answers, um, but it is so much harder for somebody who is struggling, who maybe is confused, is, is, is feeling anxious but can't quite and maybe is being gaslit as you say for them to say um you know i think there's something wrong in my relationship that's so much harder than than you as a friend turning around and just saying you just don't seem yourself is everything okay do you want to talk is there anything going on you know and um, that's on its own such a good start whether someone is actually worried about their own relationship or if it's their friend's relationship they're worried about or they just want to get some information where can they go yeah, the first place I'd say to go is go to twointerview.ie because that's where you have a lot of information. You have the quiz. You also have access to the Women's Aid National Helpline team who operate our instant messaging service. Um, and that's operated from that website. You can just click in the corner just to have a chat. And then we have the National Free Phone Helpline, which is 24 seven. It has interpreter service in 200 languages. And that number is 1-800-341-900. The instant messaging and the helpline aren't just for uh, those who might be worried about their own relationship. We are also a resource if you are worried about somebody else and you're just not really sure if you're right. Uh, and even if you are pretty sure you're right, you're not really sure how to go about uh, getting support. So if the information that's written isn't enough and you just want to chat to somebody about it, that service is for you too. Okay, Sarah, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. I feel like I learned so much in the space of 10 minutes. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thanks also for coming on board with the campaign. Delighted to be on board. And for anyone watching, you can keep an eye out on the Women's Aid Instagram and my own Instagram, where we'll be sharing more about the Two Into You campaign.